now the pants. And I'm going to do the pants and the inside of the jacket all on the same smoothing group. Um, and the reason is, is I don't want this hard line transition to appear in the texturing. And you'll see what I mean once we unhide all the pieces of the model. So I'm leaving the shoes out. So that looks good, and I'll set that to 4. Height selected. Select the shoes. Just gotta make sure that I grow them. Make sure I grab everything. And I'll set those to 5. Height selected. Um, the coat. One more grow. There we go. Set this to six, um, and then do a hide. Selected, and then the hands. Just make sure I uncheck like that. Hit seven. All right. So now the monocle is the only thing that doesn't hit unhide all. And then the other thing I'll do is oops, take a render of this. And you'll see that the penguin looks much different. Is that he's separated by his movement group. So light's affecting the jacket differently than the pants and the inside of the jacket. And then where the uh, vest and his tie would go and his face. And then also his hat. Alright, so that's that's the importance of smoothing groups is it just allows us to separate the different surfaces without actually applying a physical texture to them. But then also when we do apply the texture is that there's a, a difference between surfaces. Uh, we can go back later on and adjust some smoothing groups also. Um, I just I get the smoothing groups down initially of what I think is gonna look good. And then if I need to later on I make adjustments. So even with things like box that are really boxy like the hands, is with smoother groups they look a lot cleaner. And that's again one of the main reasons that you need to use smoother groups. I most game engines now do handle smoother groups. It's not like in the days of Dreamcast where you didn't have smoother groups. So here's our model. Uh, again, we're we're under 500 triangles. That that was our goal for this. Um it does look like the penguin. I mean, yeah, we don't have some of the features, but we have to work within our limitations. And that's really the objective here is working within our limitations so that we can texture this and make it look that much better. So let's save this file and we'll continue with unwrapping. All right, so we're going to actually get ready to unwrap the, the character of the penguin here. And before I get started, there's just something that I want to fix on the face. Um, we can see that there's these black lines here, and this is caused because of the uh, the triangle isn't turned the right way. So I'm going to go to my polygon sub object mode and click on turn. And then I can see my little triangles here. I'll just change that and change that, that, that. And I'm just doing some simple turning here of the edges so that I give the face some more definition. And we don't run into that issue where the the face looks a little weird. Uh, so that looks better. I can try to turn other edges also. And that looks better. 
we can spend a lot of time turning edges, but um, just turning a couple to just make sure I get the uh, the shape that I want. All right, so that should be it for turning, so I can turn that off. And what I want to do here is I'm going to go and select my reference art. So in my schematic view here, I'll have those two selected. And then right click, and I want to do a uh, hide selection so that I hide those two planes so that I can't see them and I'm just seeing the, the penguin character. 